Good morning, Dominic Steele, Wednesday morning daily Bible time. We're wrapping up the second chapter of Paul's letter to the Galatians today. And as we do that, we're reflecting on six points that John Piper makes about Christian leadership and when leaders disagree from this chapter. Yesterday, we looked at the first three. One, great saints go astray, both sons of thunder and sons of encouragement. Two, ministry is made up of many judgment calls and we will have to learn to disagree on some things without rancor or bitterness or resentment. And three, every strength has its corresponding weakness and we're all vulnerable. So today, we turn our attention to the last three. Number four, we need each other's different strengths and we mustn't envy one another, but rather we need to give thanks to God for his wisdom. Diverse people in the body of Christ need each other's different strengths. Right at the start of Paul's Christian life, when no one would take a risk on his behalf, it was Barnabas that came forward. But years later, when Barnabas was falling away from the truth, Paul came forward and, and saved him for the cause. These men at different times needed each other's different strengths. Can either man boast over the other? Piper says no. God has chosen to build a community of diverse people. His aim is not that all the Barnabases become Pauls or all the Pauls become Barnabases. His aim is that they help each other fight the fight of faith and endure to the end and be saved. When one is weak, the other is strong. When the strength of one makes him vulnerable to a corresponding weakness, the other be there with a balancing virtue. And his aim is that we not envy or resent each other, but we rejoice in the wisdom of the Spirit who creates and moulds us according to his choosing. Fifthly, past experiences and past usefulness are no guarantee of future obedience. Successful Christian living is made up of vigilance and constant prayer. In Acts chapter 11 verse 24, we see Barnabas, a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and God using him mightily in the church. But it's really clear in Galatians 2, he's not full of the Holy Spirit. He gives way to a spirit of error, and he ceased for a season to walk the way of faith. Therefore, key lesson, none of us should rest on our laurels. None of us should say, well, I know I once had this marvelous experience of God, so I am safe and secure from now on. Rather, we should say, let us watch and pray that we not fall into temptation. Let us put on the whole armor of God and do all to stand in the day of testing. Let us hide in the word of God, uh, that we might not sin against him. Uh, just as experiences of past usefulness are no guarantee of future obedience, the Christian life, it's a race to be run and finished. It's a fight to be fought and won, a fight to be kept to the end. It's not a place for coasting and it's not a place for drifting. Persevering faith rather than past faith is the path to glory. And the final one, number six from John Piper, the cause of God will triumph through all the weaknesses and failures of his people. Our defeats are temporary. The celebration of our enemies is brief. Three evidences of this from the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 6. Sometime after separating from Barnabas, Paul refers to Barnabas as a fellow worker who shares his life and labor. The breach that's occurred at the time of Galatians 2 has been healed by 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Secondly, in 2 Timothy 4.11, Paul says to Timothy, Get Mark, bring him with you, for he's very useful to me. Mark became useful to Paul, but also served as Peter's interpreter and wrote a gospel, even though there's evidence of a breach earlier. Thirdly, it's that God triumphs even through the failures of his people. In that when the um, contentious issue is not solved, I mean, neither missionary, Paul or Barnabas, quit the ministry, neither missionary, uh, Peter or Paul, quit the ministry. Instead, they chose new partners and went on with the ministry of the gospel. And out of one faltering missionary journey, there emerged two. Piper's conclusion is that God has done this again, and again, and again in history. That out of the ashes of failure, he fans a few embers into a new fire that burns for his glory. Really helpful little analysis from John Piper on these uh, disagreements in uh, Galatians 2. Thanks for joining us on Daily Bible Time today. See you tomorrow for Thursday morning.